Hello, welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. And now, in a recent episode, we talked about uh, massive wind turbines. We had a look at those really big, huge wind turbines on the big wind farms, which produce gigawatts of electricity. But there is a, a smaller version. Uh, and this episode's really about smaller wind. Not like tiny wind, not like pointless wind, just smaller. Smaller, like this one. Dale, this is a very impressive setup you got here. I mean, because uh, I think I was expecting a, a tiny sort of shed where you made some wind turbine blades, but this is you're manufacturing entire small wind turbines on this site. And the philosophy that we've pursued here is that we make everything uh, for the windmill. So we make the tower, uh, we make the generator, we make the blades, and we make the electronics as well. So right. tip to toe is British designed and British made. Right. So this is part of a is it a, a five kilowatt effectively a small wind turbine. This bit, that we because it, it gets squashed down together, doesn't it? But So this bit turns with the blades and that bit in the middle stays static. Yeah, the two outside parts turn. Yeah. Uh, they're both magnet rings right. and, and this is the, the copper piece. So there's copper coils wound up but then set in resin, which is really clever. Yeah, it's designed for at least a 20 year life, so it's important right. to protect you know, components like that. It's a very well proven model as well. I think there are like right. 2,000 of them already in operation. Right. So, right. You know, right. okay. And then, so these aren't necessarily made, being made for this country. They're making these, these are going all over the world. Yeah, this one is on its way to Japan, along with a few, few more over there. Um, we've sent quite a lot to Japan, actually. Um, some of it is in the wake of the Fukushima. Uh, disaster over there you know the Japanese government have kind of instigated a big feeding tower program quite the opposite to what's happening over here funnily right. enough and uh, so there's a demand for small windmills and solar yes. power which is nice so it will be so what it's mainly get then going to be farmers on their own land and will put up one of these or land yeah I think so I mean this this is power of a house um, or, or, or a farm uh, small business that kind of stuff yeah. so this is what's mounted onto the pole Yes, top of or the tower. Top top of the tower. Of the ta sorry, top of the tower. So that then can, that can presumably rotate that way. Uh, uh, a, yes, I mean, yeah. yes, it can. Yes, yes. But then this is but so. What normally this would be mounted like that, that way round. So the blade, so the blades join on this here. Yeah, there, there, and there. So then, three blades. Right. And but then what are these bits here then? The, 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 uh, these are the springs that uh, control the overspeed of the turbine. So uh, when it's going fast enough, there's a certain amount of load in the blades, which, uh, which opens the springs up and allows them to, to shed the wind. Oh, I see. So they, they will turn, so they're, you're getting less... They feather. So, so it kind of regulates itself according right. so to you've said no, a few There's no kind of complicated electronics controlling the blades. It's just no. mechanical. Just a spring. Just a spring. That's yeah. really clever. Yeah. So when this one's going faster, it's producing more electricity. Yes. Which is which up to is a certain point. Up to a certain point. So then it, it reaches that point, and it's slow, that, so that will regulate it and slow it down. Yeah. Yeah, there's presumably a housing that goes over all of yeah, this. Yeah, so. absolutely. Right. Yeah, and something that allows it to yaw, as you were saying. This part has to be able to turn in the wind. Right. Yeah. And we'll, is that we'll controlled that by a tail or by? Yes, that is. Yeah. Oh, so right. the wind so does that for us. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So the wind actually controls the uh, overspeed via the blade pitch and the what we call the yaw, keeping it turned into the wind. Placed into the wind. Yeah. understand this this is a, this is the mold i guess uh yeah the, uh, a mold and uh, a bit of an oven at the same time if you touch it, you can feel it's warm oh yeah it is wow oh it's quite hot still this one's yeah. just been baked right um so what and that's five it, it smells like fiberglass yeah it smells for, doesn't it yeah. for the viewers that can't uh, they, that haven't got smell of vision it's quite a strong smell in here but that's yeah. So that's a fibre, and then is there's a steel bar up there. Does yeah. that and that presumably runs? I don't think it runs the entire length, right. but it is the root of the blade, and it's, it's what uh, we use to mount it onto the turbine, stick a bearing around. And that's and that's what gets turned to to flare. No, uh, feather. Feather. Beg your pardon. Feather the blade. Because yeah, so often, this kind of manufacturing is done overseas and somewhere cheaper. Somewhere cheaper, and yeah, it doesn't employ local people. But this yeah, is and it's true. And when we first started, we we built Britwin from a number of companies. Some that we owned they were part of us and some right. that we bought and the blade part uh, these were made in Thailand when we bought it and we right. brought them back pulled the molds back and, and we make our own we repatriated blade manufacturing so you brought blade <coughs> manufacturing yeah back to this country it costs a little bit more but you know right. you're in charge of it in terms of quality and timing I think you know we think it's a better outcome and yeah. we create jobs in Britain and it's got to be a better thing because presumably, I mean, there are people in this country then that are buying these. I'm imagining yes. Scotland more than yeah. anywhere else. That's right. Yeah. Small businesses, right. farmers. 
I guess they are small businesses, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah. And farming wind makes a lot of sense because it doesn't yeah. take up a lot of room in your farm. It's no, it's a pole, isn't it? And yeah. You still have your sheep yeah. and your cows. <laughs> but then, uh, if, you, if you have to, if you have to, yeah. of course. <laughs> You can still have rows of cauliflowers. Yeah, carrots. And carrots. Yeah. <laughs> <But> <laughs> we could, let's just list vegetables. <laughs> I know how much my solar panels produce in a year, which is about two and a half to three thousand kilowatt hours a year. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to do I wash them every now and then. That's do about you? it. Yeah, yeah give them a squirt. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Well, there's birds poo on them, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I have to yeah, wash that off. But then, so do you know what one of these will produce on average, sort of in a, on a kind of good windy site? Yeah, there's a big difference between England and Scotland. So in England, one of these R9s will produce about uh, nine megawatt hours. Oh, that, so it's called a nine because of that thing. Yeah. Nine megawatt hours in a year. That's, a, that's right. That's about three average houses. It is, More or yeah. less, more or less. But in Scotland, we're talking 15, something like right. that. I see. Uh, so. There's a cube law relationship between wind speed and the energy that you can get from it. So if you double the wind speed, you get eight times the energy out yeah. wow. from the same machine. Wow. And the winds in Scotland aren't double, but they're, yeah. they're bigger. Yes. So they're getting like 15, 15 megawatt, megawatt hours. So that's, yeah. uh, that's like, is that 15,000 kilowatt hours? Yes. Or yes, it yes. is. 15,000, which is a lot. Yeah, so the is. average UK house uses two and a half to 3,000 a year. So that's, yeah, that's, right. so so that's, that's enough for five houses, effectively. One of these yeah. generates and enough electricity for five houses. That's three megawatt hours per installed kilowatt. And a typical solar installation is doing one megawatt hour per installed kilowatt. Right. By comparison. Yes, I, I see. Yes. Right. We might do the, that as figures. <laughs> like numbers. It's like oh, represented oh. in carrots. Yes. Can we do it in numbers of carrots? <laughs> but I mean, that is the real big difference between wind and solar, because I, I've still got a bit of a um, discomfort with seeing large fields mm. where you could grow stuff yeah. that are covered in solar panels, and then 100 metres down the road there's a massive factory or a flat-roofed warehouse with nothing on the roof. Yeah. You think you could put them on the roof first? Yeah, <laughs> kind of makes sense. But you know, and you can have sheep under. You know, a lot of those fields with solar panels do have sheep to keep the grass down. Yeah, if you want sheep, but you can't grow carrots there. It's very difficult. No, and do we need to keep the grass down? Very good point. I'm. I'm just going to say this as a layperson, but this is bigger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's bigger than those. Yeah. So yeah, this is for a much bigger wind turbine. Yeah, this, this is for the big brother, the H15. So it's a 15 kilowatt machine. It still has three blades. Uh, it's still variable speed, so it goes faster in a faster wind. Um, but it will make, in the same wind conditions in England, this will power 12 homes instead of three. Were these uh, moulds from Thailand or, uh, as well, or is this a different... No, these system? are ours. We, right. we designed and made these. So this um, is your, entirely your construction yeah. thing. Wow, that's amazing. So that, and that is... For a, it would be on a higher tower. It's a bigger, yes, bigger thing altogether. Yeah, fifteen or twenty meter tower. But that, but the actual blades then are made in the same way. It's fiberglass. Yeah, they're fiberglass blades. Yeah, yeah, lay the fiberglass in there, put the resin in, shut the lid, suck right. on the tube to create oh, a right. vacuum to, to presumably to, not someone going <laughs> 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 some sort of machine. But oh, I see. Eastern so that's European yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> He said Brexit and Eastern <laughs> Europeans. <laughs> I'm not here. <laughs> um, uh, but then, so that sucks the air out and sucks the resin in. That's it. And then the, f the finished blades over there are really impressive. So Dale, this is the, the big one, basically. That, so those big blades go in, I'm guessing, <laughs> they <laughs> yeah. go in there yeah. and they're yeah, joined right. on there. Yeah, bolted in here. Right. And what's amazing is the end of those blades then is there's no steel or support inside. That's just fibreglass, yeah. but chunky. I mean, chunky. that's very we were thick. talking about that thick yeah. yeah. if you yeah. saw it. Yeah. So they're bolted onto that. So that, so, and they, they don't, turn in any other way they just no. spin round like that. Right. Your, your original turbine up on the hill outside Stroud is of the similar design isn't it so what is that yeah. it's because they're um, uh, variable speed machines the, the, the type that go uh, speed up and down with the wind speed and so they they need a different kind of generator it tends to be bigger and flatter right. and so the early version uh, that we built up on top of the hill just looked like what it was right and the yeah. later versions uh, became more disguised with an aesthetic kind of uh, nacelle so right. this just looks like what it is a big ring generator here yeah um and the blades bolted out front so yeah right. you're right it's a, it's a mini version of the one we built uh, 20 years ago because a lot of the new ones it's like a, you see a box on the top of the tower yeah which is sort of long and thin well yeah typically they are the type that run only at one wind speed we call them fixed speed machines and they have a gearbox inside so they have a different uh, kind of mechanical layout so you'll have the blades at the front then you'll have a gearbox and then you'll have a generator on the back 
uh, and that's very different. And it's a yeah. conventional generator, uh, conventional gearbox and that kind of stuff. And this is a special type of generator and it has to be flat <clears throat> and has to have a much larger diameter. There's a lot more to go wrong mechanically in a fixed speed machine because you've got a gearbox for one thing. There are a lot of loads on the, on the drive shafts in the gearbox, a lot of power spikes from the gusts of wind. A variable speed machine will absorb the power spikes. Um, so we, in a way, we trade mechanical uh, complexity for electronic complexity. So we synchronize with the grid using inverters. Uh, we get the 50 hertz frequency using inverters, right. whereas a fixed speed generator uses a gearbox to set that speed of synchronization to 50 hertz. So you're using an inverter. So this, can, this could be going above 50 hertz or slightly below, but you can regulate that with the inverter. Is the, that the speed of the blades doesn't dictate the hertz of the power. Right. And so what height of tower would that go on? Uh, about 20 one? meters. Right, so not, it's not a massive, not, massive huge yeah, one, but it's too big. still quite big. Yeah. So yeah, when I suppose when the blade's at the very top, what is it, about 30 metres then? Something like that. Yeah. 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 Are these being installed in this country or are these mostly overseas? Just starting to come off the production line. I think we're going to send one to Japan soon, we right. hope, as a, as a kind of, uh, you know... Oh, so this is a new, a new model? It's a new machine, yeah, right, yeah absolutely. Right. Just coming off the production line now. So we're having, we've got uh, three installed in Britain, but they've been test machines. Right. And um, we have to start installing the first proper machines later this year right. uh, not you know in, in the next couple of months but again like a community this is a very ideal sort of size for a, a, a you know a village a village or something just i'm just <laughs> thinking you know sm but a small community this would make a have a fairly big impact on that yeah 12 homes worth of energy right. uh, in english wind speeds uh, you know right. low wind speeds um yeah 12 homes right. it's a lot of power yes yeah so yeah, I mean, how, what, what do you know? What the, the megawatt hour, megawatt hours? Just a year, under forty. Just so under forty, 40 megawatt, megawatt hours, hours a year. That's, that's, that sounds, sounds like a lot. lot. Yeah, a small business. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Or farm. Our old friend farmers. As long as no animals involved. Yeah, no animals. No, it's just it's literally just carrots and cauliflowers, and some lovely spinach. <laughs> So that's all we've got time for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I've certainly learned a lot about small wind turbines. And basically, I just want one. I want one in my back garden. I could, I could tie a washing line to one end of it and have a little post the other end and do my washing and generate electricity. That's what I really want. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Please have a look at the Patreon support page. It really makes this show possible. And also do that subscribe thing. You just click the subscribe button, then you won't miss any more of our genuine, down-to-earth, organic goodness. Fantastic. And uh, of course, if you have been, thank you for watching. <laughs>